when it comes to TV shows becoming movies, I always categorize these into three different sets. The first is a good t- a great TV series becoming a great movie. And the best examples for that are the likes of Transformers the movie and Batman the Mask of the Phantasm. Then there's the second category, which is a good TV show becomes an okay movie. This is, goes along the lines of, like, say, The Simpsons movie, where, as I, as I put it, it promised gold but delivered silver. And then the final one, a great TV show becomes a crap, an awful movie. The best example for that is none other than Tom and Jerry, the movie. And then we have Teen Titans Go. I have no idea where to go with this one because, for the starters, I've never liked the series to begin with. I can definitely narrow it down to at least, out of the episodes that I've watched, there's only like about three or four that I actually like and that's not giving it a very positive spin so I was questionable about them actually making a movie of this so that's where I'm here I'm here to review the Teen Titans Go movie Teen Titans Go to the movies now I am going to narrow it down to basically five key points of the film. And with that, that's where I'm going to go with. And that's what I'm going to do. The story. The story for this is somewhat interesting and uninteresting at the same time. The Titans decide that... Instead of, yeah, they want to be considered real heroes. And in order to do that, to do that they decide making a movie is the best option. Then they go on to decide maybe fighting a arch enemy is the real, he- the real reason to be a superhero. Then it goes back to being, you know, wanting to be in a film, then back to fighting the supervillain, then back to the film, then back to the supervillain. It just... It goes back and forth that many times. It just gets sort of annoying for me that. Because I can understand, obviously for a film, they want to fight a villain. That makes sense. But to be considered real heroes that they have to have a movie, that just sort of... uh, You know, it's one of those things. It's sort of like feels like it's slowing down the movie of what it's meant to do if they actually just had literally like from the start of it like just say that they wanted to make a movie then obviously then they decide right best instead of making a movie why don't we fight a villain and they just stuck with that and then the rest of the film was the movie part of it, it would make sense. But the fact that they're going back and forth, back and forth with the same thing, it's just sort of drags on for me. Anyway, that's all I can say about the story of the thing. It is good that they've juggled the two between them, but it's sort of like, it goes from a side that I'm not interested in seeing to a side that I am interested in seeing and back to the side that I'm not interested in. That's it. The voice actors. Now, obviously, the main cast is voiced by the same cast that did their original selves. So, they do, and they're also the same for the TV series. So, they do this good job that they actually do, and there's no fault in that whatsoever. With the extra characters, there are some that I'm actually quite surprised by. Like, Will Arnett is... The voice of Slade. Now, I'm used to Ron Perlman being Slade, but for the fact is that they're trying to have serious and goofy at the same time, and Will Arnett does such a good job, especially with the likes of the Lego Batman 
in Lego Batman movie and the Lego movie, and also Bojack Horseman in Bojack Horseman. So he has that caliber of serious and goofy, and it works. No other actor that I can think of in modern times can do that really, really well. Then there's also like certain minor roles that aren't considered minor, depending on how you look at it. Like, for example, Superman is voiced by Nicolas Cage. And in my mind, he finally gets to do the dream that he always wanted to do, which is play as Superman. Might not be how he actually wanted to play as Superman, but he gets to be Superman and he does a good job. A very, very good job. Then we also have Kirsten Bell, who does the voice of Jade Wilson. And this is actually a really good thing because she's only known for some Disney movie that just, yeah, you know, one of those things. But she actually does a good job because she sort of, She's the actress that can actually be a serious actress, no matter what. And she does a really good job, especially with Jade Wilson. Because if it wasn't her doing it, I wouldn't have re realized it was her as the voice. Because I actually thought it was someone else completely. So it was a good job on that one. There are other cameos involved, other voice actors, including one certain one, the great legend, Stan Lee. But, you know, these are all like sort of minor things because if you know who they are, then good on you. If you don't know who they are, then it's not me saying that it's a bad thing. It's just sort of like it's there. You know, if you got, if you know who they are, then you know who they are. If you don't know who they are, then obviously that's understandable. The jokes. Now, when it comes to the jokes, sometimes the Teen Titans Go can go a bit bad. Like, they have this reference of bringing back jokes that were famous from the TV series, like Robin and his baby hands, or the excessive farting jokes or even things that it's just sort of they drag on just to extend the time that's what it does Slade wow his name is really fun to say dramatically Slade 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 Silence what is the point of all this? See, those sort of jokes, they just don't work with me because they feel like they're just trying to grab the audience that likes Teen Titans Go. You know, the childish jokes. You know, I like childish jokes, so I must like these jokes. You know, that sort of thing. I don't like... I have sort of like... If you ask me to watch this years and years ago, I probably would have found it funny, but I've moved on. The jokes haven't. That's all I can say about it. But, but, there are jokes that do work really, really well. Some of the jokes that have worked really well that actually made me laugh. Like, well, the first one that really made me laugh was, of course, the acknowledgement of the films and they asked superman wonder woman and green lantern if they've made films and this is what happened well has there been a movie about you so many and more to come it took a while but yeah i have my own now there was a green lantern movie but we don't we don't talk about that <laughs> oh boy i can't get over that other one <laughs> uh. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, like I said, some of the jokes really work. 
And then it got even funnier when, obviously, when they went to the cinema, they started stating that the next big blockbuster film, and it's hovering over this gigantic R, and it's like, it's got to be the Robin movie. It's got to be the Robin movie. And then it's like, Alfred, the movie. And you're like, really? Then it ends up doing another one coming next summer, and it's like these eyeballs lighting up, and it's like, ooh, very villainous or very ominous. Oh, very good. And then it's the Batmobile car. And it's like, really? Why? <laughs> it's still funny, but it's like, why funny? And then it comes to what I think is the ultimate joke that I really could not stop laughing at. Next, next summer, the story of Batman's greatest ally. That's me. That must be me. And best friend in the whole wide world. Thank you for making a movie about... Utility Belt. What? The movie. You put things in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Stop laughing. You moron. Oh. oh, my God. I need a breather. Oh, oh jeez. Woo. You see what I mean? Some of these jokes, they work. And that's what makes it good. They actually target the right jokes. And there's nothing I can think of that has actually done this good. You can actually have your own saying on this, but that's where I go. I mean, there's even this one scene that made me laugh, which is a reference to something I've watched in the past, where they decide to change the timelines, and the ultimate line comes to Cyborg saying, so changing the past didn't help, and it created an alternate world. Who saw that coming? As a fan of Back to the Future, I actually thought that was funny. And I say that... Uh, honest to god basis that was funny it's not often i say a joke that's a reference to something in the past is funny but that is funny and that's what makes it work for me anyway they at least they targeted the jokes that work and the t jokes that don't work for me but in some alternative area the jokes that didn't work for me might have worked for somebody else. But, you know, that's all I can say on the matter. The music. The music... Uh, where can I start with it? There are some that I think are good, but then there are some that are just sort of... Uh, like, the first music. The first song that happens in the film is entitled Go. And it's just sort of like, I remember when I watched it, my skin crawled, my blood turned cold because I thought, you're starting off with a music. I didn't want to watch a musical. I wanted to watch an action film or comedy film, something like that. But obviously, it was sort of like cringy, bad. Oh, morons. Then there was the song about being upbeat, and it was really good. I actually enjoyed it. Then there was the song about making a movie, and I thought that was cringy too, because it was like, once again, it being cringy, because it was so bad. It was like, you don't need to sing about your accomplishments you, or even the fact that you are a movie. You just tell them you're, who you are, what you want, and all that lot. Instead of just, that's like me if I said, right, here are my accomplishments and I sing. No, I haven't got a good singing voice. So obviously that's where it's going to go. Uh, then there's obviously, like I said, the Go song. As I mentioned earlier, there was a song called Go. 
it actually gets played three times in the movie. And this is where I'm going to have to admit it got better with each adaptation. The first one is the worst. The second one got better. And I actually sort of, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but then the third one came on right at the end. And then I thought, right, this is what it's sort of a secret message, sort of like it advances on how good the the team is becoming from stupid morons into heroes. And I think that's actually a good metaphor for the song, the entitled Go. Oh, morons. The animation. The animation here is the obvious standing for the animation is the well it basically as it is in the original you know the same style the same enjoyment then there's like the musical segments like the uh upbeat inspirational song about life that sort of made it feel like disney-esque you know something wow i you know if i watched more of this if this was like an episode one episode i actually would have watched it Instead of it being like a cutscene or something for a music video, you know, I'd actually would watch it if they did the animated episode like this. They probably have. I just haven't watched it. Then there's obviously the My Superhero Movie animation. I feel like as good as that is, I feel like it was, this is me saying this, it's like, like, you're giving the task to someone who has never seen Teen Titans or Teen Titans Go and said, draw me a Rob, you know, draw me this guy, you know, Robin. And he, they just asked him, you know, said he's like Batman or they've read a reference to him, but they tried to give him this own spin. That's what they've done. And it only happens with Robin and anyone else during Robin's fight scene. So, it would work for generic characters. Yes, it works. But when it comes to Robin's character, it feels off-putting to me. Because it's sort of like, this is Robin. This is the boy wonder. This is the man that has done it all. And yet, you yeah, you know, that's just me, though. I mean, a lot of people I might have seen this and I've said that that animation actually looks good. Me, I just... I just don't like the Robin design. That's all for this one bit of animation. That's it. I could say more about this, but there isn't much more to say about Robin. And then there is the um, oh, Lion King-esque segment, which sort of looked good. And I thought this was literally the best one. But there were some things I actually did question about, like Batman's design. I can understand if they went with, um, what's his name? The latest Batman. I, I do apologize. I'm, I just can't think of his name. But you know who I'm on about. I feel like they went with that design, and which makes sense because... It's of the times. They can't go with, like, say, for example, the Michael Keaton Batman or the Christian Bale Batman or even, obviously, Adam West's Batman design because each one had its own significant flair. So they went with the modern times version that a lot of people at this current moment know about. They've done the same with the likes of The Flash, the Superman character, all that lot. And that actually, I feel is really, really good. And that's pretty much all I can say about this as a whole for the animation side of it. There's nothing more I could give on a positive side of it. There's nothing more I can give on a negative side of it. It's just like there's some things I like what they've done with the animation and there's some things I don't like what they've done with the animation. That's it. Well, I think that's everything I need to talk about. I don't think I'm missing anything, and what the hell? Is it working? Almost got it. Hurry, 
There is not much time. They need to know we're still here. Booyah! We're transmitting! This is the Teen Titans. Can anyone hear us? We think we found a way back. Oh, yeah, that uh, mid credits end scene. Uh, guess I have to talk about that as well. So, um, there's a few things I want to talk about this because I actually did some research and uh, just let me find my notes. Mm -hmm. Ah, here you are. Uh, the notes that I have here, they're actually quite interesting because some of them are like rumors and I have no idea which is true or not because I actually found out later on about literally about two days before I have, I finished this video, I was about to finish this video, I should say, that I found some info. So this is added info. So this is where it's going to start. Obviously, I'm going to say what I've seen and then where it goes from there. So obviously, after this uh, whole segment, I thought this is going to make... There's going to be a season six. And I was like, great. But then obviously I did some research thinking what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And the first start was obviously the infamous moment where the creators of Teen Titans Go says that if Teen Titans Go at the, to the movies was successful, then season six will happen. But then, obviously, later on, as the days went on, the movie did come out in cinemas. And the next report was that Netflix had acquired the rights to Teen Titans. Which means not only were they going to show seasons 6, but also actually have seasons 1 to 5 on the series. I thought this was absolutely brilliant until obviously later on I found out more another rumor stating that if season six flops that they're still going to do seasons seven, eight and nine despite what you know others say which is where the rumor I think dies because I can agree with the fact that if season six did flop the chances are you're on about 50 50 whether they decide to keep it going or not and netflix being netflix if something fails they don't bother with it again so you know that's where i'm going with that one uh the second rumor that i heard was that it was going to adult swim and i thought that would actually would be quite decent because it worked with samurai jack However, this is where obviously some things sort of, I'm going to say be awkward because obviously these are teenagers and the involvement of Adult Swim means there's going to be certain things as in sex, drugs, um, violence, obviously, and even offensive language. But obviously this is where things sort of, go like two directions doesn't it so it's sort of like i could see this happening but they might have to tone it down a good chunk for it to be adult swim worthy if that makes sense but then i found out on a youtube on youtube i'll get that right that there was a page entitled season six deconfirmed and this was made by the round table now in the video i'm only going to give you the brief version check that video out if you want better info but this is where it goes there is an official teen titans go wiki and there is a group in there which is the official teen titans go crew they can confirm and deny any rumors and then they got this one message stating that it's going the next thing the infamous episode entitled teen titans versus teen titans go is going to be 
direct to video, meaning that the next thing that's going to happen is that there's not going to be a season six, unfortunately. But on top of that, there is a positive in every dark light. And this positive is that this is an entirely separate crew working on it. Which means that, on the positive side of things, everything that will happen will be done by an independent group of people. Which means that the Teen Titans Go will not have their own input on what happens. They will not have any acknowledgement except for what they can suggest. But it will be that a suggestion. But with the independent crew, they'll be working on everything. And the final thing that was sort of the nail in the coffin on the whole issue is stating that this was what the end moment of Teen Titans Girl movie was hinting at. There is nothing else I can say other than what we have got which is quite a shame because I was actually looking forward to seeing this. But with Teen Titans Go! vs Teen Titans, I just feel like this is going to be something like the uh, Ben 10 Generator Rex movie or any of the crossovers we have seen involving action-based shows where two people work together are fighting each other, they don't realise that there's a bigger evil out there, they fight the bigger evil, they become friends, and then they move on. I'm not saying that not to watch this, but I'm not going to give this when it gets made, and that's when, or if, or whatever, it gets made, I'm not going to exactly say I'm expecting high hopes. I've already set my bar because... I enjoyed the Ben 10 Generator Rex um, crossover episode movie. So I know where the level lies. Other than that, there is not much to talk about. There's only one final thing to talk about, and that's the overall score. My overall score for this film is a 5 out of 10. Is it the greatest movie in the world? Not by a long shot. Is it the worst movie in the world? No. Well, there's only one option for this, and it's right down the middle. There are some positives I can say about this film, but there is a lot of negatives as well to go with it. With every positive, there's a negative. With every negative, there is a positive of this show. There isn't much I can say to defend it, but there is a lot I can say to promote it. We have our own opinions of whether things are good or bad, but when it comes right down the middle to discuss something like it's okay, it's quite hard to actually come across, mostly because it's really hard to actually think of something that's meh, even the words. But, does that answer one big question? Would I watch the TV series again? No, not even by a long shot. But, would I watch this movie again? The answer to that is an emphatic Yes, this is one film I would watch again and again.